Good morning. So, last time we were talking about the dispersion or Kamij option technique for determination of the number of surface metal or active metals which are necessary for the catalytic reaction, right. So, we were talking dispersion that is the some kind of percent dispersion that is simply number of metals which are available on the surface divided by the total number of atoms or metal atoms which may be determined from your atomic absorption spectroscopy right or may be ICP some other technique. And this is actually determined by titration method which is a Kamij option here. So, this technique is nothing but a titration method and one can determine. So, the reactor system I told that this Kamij option is very specific for temperature. So, you have to do that at different conditions of temperature and then that can be used to define a turnover frequency which is very important property for the characterization of the catalyst right. The number of active sites which I am talking that can be related that number of molecules of the gas reactive gas can be jobbed right per unit time and per unit active site because once dispersion is known number of sites are known. So, your rate in a reaction when you compare different catalysts generally should be defined in terms of turnover frequency because the metal composition may be different loading may be different, but actually it is the active site or percent dispersion which talks about the catalytic activity. So, this is just a typical graph which is shown for platinum alumina catalyst 5 8 percent platinum on alumina and carbon monoxide has been used as a Kamij optic gas right. So, you can see here that the depending upon the volume the, because it is a kind of pulse volume. So, when you do the Kamij option you have identified a temperature right and then you have given a pulses right say it may be just as I said 5 ml right it can be 1 ml or 100 microliter. So, different volume of pulses can be given and then you measure the amount of the gas can be jobbed till saturation. So, once you have the ball, so pulses will come like this if you have the some volume. So, initially if nothing is can be absorbing it will come like this right and finally, it will go like this because this is just showing that the Kamij option has taken place and finally, it will come again like this right. So, this so whatever the decrement you are getting or you just add all these. So, you can find out the amount or the milli molecules of the carbon monoxide adsorbed on the surface right and you can get the idea because it is a kind of Langmuir adsorption isotherm. We, so, we are talking that it is a monolayer coverage. So, V m is a kind of either the volume of the carbon monoxide adsorbed on the active site or say for this case for carbon monoxide this is your number of molecules or gram moles of carbon monoxide adsorbed per gram of platinum right. So, you can have the idea which is related to say that we are saying suppose platinum is associatively adsorbed or uh, sorry carbon monoxide is associatively adsorbed on platinum. So, you can get the idea about the number of atoms of platinum present on which the CO has been adsorbed. So, adsorption most of the time for hydrogen we consider it dissociative. So, stoichiometry should be known as a priori right. So, when I am writing platinum adsorption then it will be platinum which reacts with hydrogen right. So, it will be 2 times platinum and this gives you P T H something like that. So, a kind of chemical reaction is taking place here right. Same thing here this can be associative this can be dissociative. So, most of the time this is associative here. So, this may be P T C O a chemical option. So, by knowing this you can have the idea about the dispersion or percentage dispersion and also you can determine the crystal size also what I said last time right because that is related to the depth monolayer depth and you can find out the atomic size and then since monolayer is being formed. So, you can find out the size of the crystal also. Uh, sometimes because most uh, you have the metal supported on the right some alumina something like that silica right. So, this what I have discussed here is just a metal we are not talked about the weaker Kamij option of the gas on the support, but support may also have the Kamij option property right. So, you have to ensure that there is no Kamij option on the support when you have a bimetallic 
catalyst or some metal on support right. So, a dispersion when you have platinum brainium or say you have ruthenium along with some copper or molybdenum then for bimetallic sometimes you get total number of sites right. If you want to get the individual number of sites or dispersion for a given site then you have to prepare two batch of the catalyst. So, first you prepare the rhodium on alumina then prepare molybdenum on alumina and then take rhodium molybdenum on alumina and then see the camp Jobson curve. So, this structure or curve is something based on to look at whether there is a chemisorption of hydrogen on alumina or not. So, generally the chemisorption of hydrogen on alumina is weak right very weak. So, we write here the Henry law. So, V is proportional to K p right. So, this for weaker adsorption as you increase the pressure the volume of hydrogen adsorbs like this and when you heat it it will dissolve immediately. So, you can check this just by taking the alumina right and then do the chemisorption of that alumina right. So, you can have the idea about the number of sites chemisorbed on alumina. Then second if you have just platinum, so the adsorption may be very strong right because platinum is strongly adsorbed. So, this is a kind of strong chemisorption or strong adsorption of hydrogen on platinum right is metal support interaction or metal gas interaction adsorbate if I talk hydrogen and it is adsorbing on the surface right. And this is your actual catalyst platinum alumina on which hydrogen is being adsorbed. So, this is a weak plus a strong adsorption right. So, on alumina it is weak on platinum it is strong. So, what is the fraction of the platinum actually on this catalyst what is the metal dispersion. So, what you have to do you have to just look at the Henry law here right and this is the adsorption when it is platinum on alumina. So, basically this is only when there is alumina. So, difference of these two. So, this is your A this is your B. So, B minus A is nothing but some kind of the molecules which have adsorbed on platinum only right. So, that is the dispersion. So, this will be used this information will be used in terms of uptake of hydrogen which is actually adsorbed on the platinum catalyst right, because the reaction is related to the platinum active site percentage dispersion of metal we are talking not the support part. So, hydrogen consumption for platinum sites is being measured in this case. So, B minus A can be calculated the difference right or something like A minus B you know, I will say that here right. So, that is nothing but a difference of this which is nothing but if you write, look at here this one is the actual adsorption of hydrogen because after this we assume that nothing is changed here this is the initial and then this is the line which is just showing a tangent just draw a straight line. So, this is the value of B and this is the value of whatever here A which is 0 at low pressure right. So, this B can be written directly now and then based on this because two molecules of hydrogen will adsorb right or hydrogen molecule will adsorb on two platinum sites. So, you can very easily find out the metal dispersion right. So, when there is a bimetallic catalyst, multimetallic catalyst or metal support and support can also adsorb the reactive gas or it has also the chemisorption property. So, you have to do this study two times first find out only for the support and then for metal and then take the difference. So, that was the chemisorption part and the other characterization methods which are generally based on the binding energy because it is a core right electron when, when you look at they are distributed in different cells right in an atom. So, but what we are giving some kind of energy source right some x ray say. So, that will be primary beam of energy and that primary beam of energy if it strikes on the surface. So, this may be a primary beam of the energy when it strikes on a solid substrate sub, right substance which has which is metal basically and contains the atom. So, it gets activated and it will leave the different kind of energy right it may be photon it may be electron it may be your x rays right and this can be a primary beam which is here and then these are the secondary right scattered beam and this can be some kind of scattering here also right to different depths right. So, they may 
pass this right defect also this is diffraction and then they may go to the other side and you can have the energy of these beams also. So, we will talk on that. So, basically what I mean to say by giving some kind of energy source which strikes the substance or metal and then you look at the response of that right. So, it can be 100 electron kilo electron volt and it can be 400 kilo electron volt. So, large amount of energy that is primary energy beam which strikes on the substrate. So, it will leave different kind of secondary beams right the x ray photons auger electrons right. So, their binding energy is that is whatever the kinetic energy of the beam right which which is striking and what is the work function right. So, work function is again the minimum amount that what is required to take the electron out right from a metal because your catalytic activity what we have discussed earlier is because of the d with d orbitals right unpaired d electrons which are present in the orbitals right per atom number of d electrons. So, the larger number it has the larger activity basically right. So, what we do this we give the different kind of techniques. So, it can be based on heat like in your TPR TPD you do you heat the sample right and you see the response right in it can be in the kind of ions right beam of ions which may be something like your ion electrons right uh, spectroscopy and you can see the response of those ions which come from the catalyst surface. It can be some electrons right. So, there can be different kind of techniques right scanning electron transmission electron it can be electromagnetic field it can be photons extra photo spectroscopy. So, there are what I mean to say different technique and then beside that there can be some other which are not based on these something like just titration methods or some other structural property of the catalyst crystallography studies and so you can have those also to characterize the surface right. So, the basic thing is that we are looking a metal and we are looking its electronic property right. So, face centered the body centered cubic centered. So, there are different kind of crystals which are available in a metal right. So, crystal means smallest grain and when you say particle it is made of large number of many crystals right. So, that may be a particle. So, when you do the x-ray diffraction you are looking a morphology of the crystal right. So, there can be different crystals. So, you will see these techniques very quickly. So, the characterization of the catalyst by heat which I said first thing right. So, that is your TPR temperature program reduction right you can see the phases which are present in the catalyst and at what temperature they reduce right. So, that may be related to your metal and support interaction also type of oxide phase which is formed on the surface right and the reduction temperature may also depend on the, the second or metal or promoter which may be present on the catalyst. Second is temperature program desorption, right like the you do the ammonia TPD right then find out the acidity and basicity of the catalyst. So, that that may be a very good tool to find out the acidity or Brunster type acidity, Lewis type acidity right or same thing for basicity of the catalyst. Temperature program oxidation right at what temperature the catalyst get oxidized right. So, stability of the catalyst. So, these information can be obtained from temperature program oxidation. So, here we are giving a kind of heating rate right we are heating it to a temperature of 1000 up to a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade or at the rate of 10 degree centigrade per minute or maybe 20 degree centigrade per minute. So, you can do the kinetic study also based on that right. So, what, what is the kinetics of that adsorption, desorption or reduction uh, you can do with that same thing T g also. So, you can have the with gas also. So, you can do the kinetics also you can do a some reaction also by using the T g a right. So, thermogrammetric analysis. So, that is the loss in weight when you heat the sample to a different temperature range at a different rate. So, by using this you can find out the kinetics also and also on a catalyst surface you can find out the if this is a metal salt you can find out what is the temperature required for calcination right. If you pass hydrogen it becomes something like TPR right. So, temperature required for reduction can be obtained for the oxide catalyst and same thing DTA which gives you the idea about the endothermicity, exothermicity and energy release during those steps right when the TGA is being done. So, TGA DTA are jointly associated or can be done jointly. 
So, temperature program reduction as I said. Uh, so, basically it is a characterization of oxide catalyst and may be other reducible catalysts which are reducible. So, you can do the TPR study right and qualitative information on oxidation state. So, there may be when the oxide during the calcination you may have different kind of the phases right as I said calcium aluminate may be different phases of calcium aluminate may be present same thing nickel oxide it may be present in different oxidation state cobalt may be present in different oxidation state same thing iron. So, all these metals may present in the different oxidation state. So, by doing this temperature program reduction you can find out the temperature at which these species can be reduced and also you can find out which phase may be present or how the reduction of these calcined catalyst takes place right. This can talk on the can quantitatively on the kinetic data also because you know now rate of change of temperature and simultaneously you are by just if you are doing the reduction in hydrogen say. So, how many molecules of hydrogen consumed can be determined by measuring the area under the curve right. So, molecules of hydrogen reacted basically at a given condition of temperature right. So, that is nothing but d alpha by d t if I do and if I know that t is changing with temperature. So, I can correlate t as a function of temperature and then very easily one can because k is equal to k 0 to the power minus e by r t from Arrhenius equation. So, you can correlate all this and you can find out the kinetics for this reduction right. And this is also helpful in optimizing the catalyst pretreatment that at what condition you need to reduce the catalyst whether reduction with hydrogen reduction with carbon monoxide is desired you can check that by making different phases and test the catalyst or do the kinetics in situ right. So, calcination temperature the question may be asked how did you select this calcination temperature how did you select the reduction temperature. So, these informations can be or provided by doing these studies right. So, the reactor system is similar right you need not to have a very specific set of even this thing can be done in your micro reactor itself you put a given mass of the catalyst and then reduce it at different conditions and then do the just measure the phases XRD phases right and that can give you the idea that at what temperature which phase have been reduced right. And so, uh, the temperature time both are important when you give the heat treatment right doing the calcination doing the reduction. So, a simple reactor system again as I have discussed last time also that a simple reactor system where you put a known mass of the catalyst and then the do the reduction right in situ in the presence of hydrogen right. So, this is the setup is same which is generally used for measurement of the dispersion right. So, when you do the chemistry option study first you reduce the catalyst right when you have a metal type catalyst. So, do reduce and then do the chemistry option. So, so the same thing what we have discussed last time. So, that setup is used for doing the TPR also. So, the catalyst generally the steps or methodology you place the catalyst in the reactor right and just with TPR the oxygen releasing catalyst is reduced in a flow of the inert gas right. So, you are passing organ nitrogen right in presence of a small concentration of hydrogen. So, hydrogen will react with the oxide sites. So, you can have the idea about the temperature which is required to reduce that oxide catalyst right. So, off gases are continuously monitored by a mass spectrometer or a detector right and the consumption of hydrogen is record, recorded as a function of the reaction temperature. So, you can give the different heating rate. So, temperature versus time plot is available with you right and the hydrogen consumption is monitored. So, you can find out how many molecules of hydrogen consumed at a given condition of temperature and you can correlate the physical or the chemical property of the catalyst with the reduction temperature. So, the reactor is controlled by processor. So, you, you have the temperature control uh, in the flow control and all which heats. So, control a processor which heats the reactor at a linear rate of 0 0.1 to 20 degree centigrade per minute. So, depending upon the type of the operators the heating rate can be changed right in your PID controller and then you can have the fast heating rate, slow heating rate because that is also equally important when you do the reduction in catalytic reactor system right. So, for calcination also for reduction also 
the rate of heating is also equally important because it is a kind of reaction right a chemical reaction between the solid particles right or between a metal and a support particle between two metals two different metal or similar metal. So, this the you know the your kinetics depends on the temperature rate of change of temperature also. So, all these information can be obtained if you do this kind of analysis right. So, reduction temperature of the catalyst can be determined and you can have the kinetics also if you need. So, why TPR is done that we have now seen that oxides of some of the catalyst which are formed during the preparation step of the catalyst and may be undesirable. So, that can be reduced right. So, that is the first important part and you can determine the temperature required for the reduction. So, if, if you see that your nickel oxide catalyst nickel oxide is prepared during the calcination and your actual catalyst is nickel. So, you have to reduce it. So, most of the catalysts are in metal state right. So, you most of the time they are in metal for the, the all the hydrogenation reaction dehydrogenation reaction right. So, you need to reduce them. So, metal can exist in more than one oxide form that you know when you calcine. So, different phases will form because you are giving a certain kind of heating rate and at a given oxygen concentration. So, just like in a case of cobalt it can be cobalt oxide or CO 3 O 4 also right. Same thing Fe 2 O 3 also Fe 3 O 4 right. So, different forms of the oxidation states may be available and when you reduce them then you will find out that what concentration of which phase is present because the area under the curve as I said can give you the idea about the moles of the hydrogen consumed for a given phase right. So, if you have two phases so you will get two peaks because both will reduce at a different condition of temperature right. So, so, so you can find out the concentration of that phase. So, if there is some promoter right then that there may be also the interference of that. So, sometimes the reduction temperature may change in the presence of the promoter right. It is not like that if you are iron oxide catalyst the reduction temperature will be same. If you have some promoter it may because by adding the promoter the dispersion may be improved right. If crystal sizes are low small they will react faster right. So, that is the nano catalysis. So, it is a kind of electronic configuration which changes when you are reducing the size of the catalyst. So, reduction of size is not related to the physical sometimes it changes the chemical structure also shape change right. So, it is reducibility may be easier right. So, that happens and sometimes you add promoters also to improve the dispersion and sometimes they may have the negative effects also. So, in the presence of these you can get the idea about the metal support interaction, metal metal interaction and metal support interaction right. Because these are also equally important for understanding or demystifying the property of the catalyst right. So, that gives you the idea about that whether the metal support instruction uh, interaction is strong right. So, your reduction will be difficult right and once your reduction is difficult it means you need a higher temperature for reduction that is one thing and same thing for the catalytic activity the gas molecule will have difficulty to carry on on that side because the metal has the affinity towards the support rather with the gas molecule. So, that is what I said earlier that we do not need a very strong metal support interaction and at the same time we do not need a very weak metal support interaction right. So, a definite kind of metal support interaction is desired for a given catalytic activity. So, that becomes very important. So, just as an example, so when you when you do the TPR you get curves like this. So, at different temperatures, so there these are the nickel based catalyst basically right and just I am talking one example of this nickel alumina say right and this is the hydrogen consumed which is here in orbit unit then can be measured in terms of the milli molecules or milli moles of hydrogen consumed per gram of the catalyst right and as a function of temperature. So, you can see here that this is one peak another peak here then again some peak here some peak here. So, different peaks right and these peaks are nothing but they, these peaks are related to the reduction temperature right and why this temperature this reduction temperatures are different because different phases are formed right. Same thing here you can see one peak here and the peak here then there is some kind of change here right and then again here. So, you can see the that there is a kind of diffraction or change in the nature of the peak right which just indicates that 
these are there is another peak which is right because of the some other component may be impurity some other component suppose you have a copper oxide also then this will also reduce along with an iron right oxide so like that. So, but you can just enlarge that you can deconvolute by changing this rate of heating temperature. So, if you just say this is at what heating rate right at say 10 degree Kelvin per minute. So, if you change the heating rate then these two peaks may get separated right. So, you can just measure them by changing this heating rate right adjusting the heating rate adjusting the temperature. So, that can be dif differentiated. So, just as an example what I have shown the graph the catalyst supported on pure alumina this exhibits a, a broad reduction peak at 850 and 1150 Kelvin right. So, that is for nickel I am talking and which is here something like one here and another here at 1150 right. This, this is the broader peak if you look at for different in all cases basically. So, this is nickel on alumina and nickel on different metal support right. So, which could be deconvolated into three components at reduction temperatures of 818, 942 and 1041. So, the peaks what I said, so there are in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 peaks. So, these can be just 1, 2, 3 at different temperatures we have. So, one peak here, another here, another here, another here. So, you can identify the peaks at different temperature if you just look at the picture carefully. The reduction peak at 818 just as an example, but you can do this by and confirm it through your x-ray diffraction pattern right. The x-ray diffraction pattern will give you the peak intensity right based on your Bragg's law lambda is 2 d sin of theta and at different 2 theta values you will have the different peaks right which may be related to your interplanar distance what you call d value right. So, that is the distance between two crystal planes right and that is very specific for one phase right. So, calcium oxide will have one CO Al 2 3 will have another one nickel oxide will have another d value. So, that is very specific right and the database softwares are available by which one can identify those components. So, by comparing that x-ray diffraction results with this TPR results you can very easily confirm that these are the phases formed and the temperature required for reduction of these phases is this one right for a given phase is this one. And also because the same conditions a reduction of nickel oxide species with weak interaction with alumina. So, if this is only nickel oxide suppose right. So, at the end of peak obtained because of nickel oxide if it is at two temperature it means the part of the nickel oxide is strongly binded with the support right. So, it means for reduction it will require a larger temperature. If the peak comes at a uh, at an earlier temperature it means the temperature is lower for reduction. So, it may be a weaker adsorption. So, that is what it is mentioned here 818 Kelvin which may be somewhere here and thus it says that for same aluminum nickel alumina. So, one peak here another peak here right same thing here also say here and here right same oxide phase. So, that is because of the strong metal support interaction or weaker metal support interaction right. So, if the for the same phase if you are getting that the x-ray diffraction pattern says just that there are is only one phase present and here you are getting a two uh, one or two different peaks right for one phase only. So, that could be because of the metal support interaction. So, by doing this TPR study you can get the information about the phases right which can be confirmed from x-ray diffraction and also you can get the idea about the amount of the hydrogen required to reduce the catalyst right because area under the curve you can get the molecules of the hydrogen consumed and that will be required in final catalytic reduction also. So, reduction peaks which appear at higher temperature in this case they are related to the reduction of highly dispersed non stoichiometric amorphous nickel aluminate spinal right. So, there may be another phase which forms like this one is nickel oxide but when you have done the calcination as I said earlier also that temperature and time is very crucial. So, it may happen that part of the nickel reacts with the aluminum oxide right or nickel oxide reacts with the aluminum oxide and forms a structure which is another phase nickel aluminate right NiEl 4 So, this will require a higher temperature because now it is a metal which has reacted with the support aluminum right 
much more strongly binded with that right. So, that will require still a higher temperature. So, the 1100 or above that what we were showing in that that is because of this amorphous nickel which has reacted or the formation of this non crystalline that is amorphous nickel aluminate spinal right and this is because of this phase or there can be other phases also in nickel aluminate itself right. So, as I said in calcium aluminate 12 CO 7 equal to 3 is one thrice CO 7 equal to 3 another one or C A equal to 3. So, these all are the reacted component right reaction between calcium oxide and aluminum oxide and forming different phase. So, they will have different peak during XRD. Same thing here nickel oxide reacts with aluminum oxide and different phases may form Al 2 4 is 1 just 1. And this is again I have just shown for cobalt catalyst supported on JSM 5 right and uh, added with copper promoter. So, this is the study which has been carried out in our lab. So, the basic idea here again just to show you that if you have a different metal their peak structure or the peak nature may change right. So, something what you see here in one catalyst where which is just cobalt. So, you are looking one peak right here one peak here right when you added copper then peak has converged together it has gone to a single peak something like that. So, it means if you want to separate these two peaks your heating rate should be changed right that that the at one heating rate under identical condition. So, copper oxide and the cobalt oxide both have just because the large amount of suppose copper is there and cobalt is there. So, both will show the peak or both will show the consumption of hydrogen right and these two peak will club together. So, you may have a wider peak right. So, when you have a bimetallic component. So, again to confirm these the uh, you should go first with the just say cobalt on JSM 5, then add prepare a batch of copper on JSM 5, or from literature just find out what is the oxidation state temperature required or reduction temperature required for copper oxide, right? Then you can distinguish the atom because copper oxide may also reduce, right? Then cobalt oxide is also reducing, and then accordingly. So, cobalt oxide again it can have CO3O4, it can have CO, right? So, these phase will reduce and finally, you will get metallic cobalt from that right. So, there may be a different peak or the complex nature of the peak or TPR structure may be observed. So, you have to just analyze that carefully. So, here just again I have just discussed that that a minimum of two peaks could be observed in the all the catalyst that is because it cobalt has two oxidation stability uh, state right. The occurrence of multiple reduction peak indicated the presence of several reducible cobalt oxide species right. So, CO 3 O 4 CO like that what I am saying CO 2 O 3 right. So, the TPR peaks in the temperature range of this, this is comprised of CO 3 O 4. So, CO 3 O 4 generally reduces like this, it goes to cobalt oxide right and that goes to metallic cobalt basically here right or CO 3 O 4 CO 2 O 3 then CO and then cobalt metal right. So, so, it means if you have COO peak that will come at a later end. If you have CO 3 O 4, so first it will reduce to cobalt oxide and then to cobalt metal right. So, the broad that is the region that may be another region that you may see a broader peak right. If the phase all phases are present right and then one is reducing to hydrogen is consuming then second phase is also reducing cobalt oxide is going to metallic cobalt. So, again there will be peak right. So, the broad peak located at higher temperature which is for copper impregnated is observed for catalyst B which I have written there is assigned to the reduction of those cobalt oxide which is CO 2 plus and CO 3 plus right which were in interaction with the support indicating that cobalt reducibility is significantly changed by the addition of copper. So, I, I, I do not want to go in detail of this at this stage because this is a part of different research. But what I mean to say if you have a promoter right then that TPR structure change that is temperature required for reduction may increase or decrease also right. So, sometimes we add a promoter to improve the dispersion right. So, once you say that dispersion is improved it means that temperature required for reduction should also be reduced because size is reduced crystal size is reduced right. So, that is also related to the crystal size. So, sometimes the promoter may have a role to reduce the reduction temperature right. So, 
that is what the addition of copper in this increase the metal support interaction as ZSM 5 can form copper silicate. So, here it has negative effect in one way right, because it has more metal support interaction. So, you got a peak something like this right, a single peak and the reduction temperature has gone on a higher side. So, it means the nature of the metal promoter and the support their tendency to react, tendency to interact during calcination can also be understand through TPR study. Right? You can get some idea by doing the TPR how this promoter has behaved right? or what kind of phases have formed or may have formed which can further be confirmed by X-ray diffraction. Right? So, TPR gives a very useful information mainly in terms of the reducibility, but one can look at in terms of the metal support interaction or analyze the data at least qualitatively if not quantitatively. right? Because sometimes qualitative information is very difficult to interpret from this kind of visual, because this will depend on the loading of copper, loading of cobalt and then concentration of the species present in different phases. So, similar to TPR, TPR as I said temperature program reduction right, you are reducing the catalyst and getting the idea in terms of reduction temperature. This temperature program desorption is another important tool right, to get the active sites or acidity and basicity of the catalyst right. So, this is applied for a catalyst characterization and something like ammonia which is a basic gas so it will give you the acidic site, hydrogen Right. Again talks on the chemage option. So, this can be used for dispersion, percentage dispersion and a kind of pulse chemage option. Right. Carbon monoxide. So, carbon monoxide can give you again the type as I said the reduction in the presence of carbon monoxide and also you can look at the active sites which are adsorbed and at what temperature they do desorb because to have the reaction the metal site should be free from the that a catalytic adsorbed site should be free from the reactant species or the product species. So, you can get the idea about the desorption right and same thing carbon dioxide again carbon dioxide is an uh, acidic gas. So, this will give you the basic side of the catalyst right. So, these informations and beside that pyridine can be used. So, any basic gas to find out the acidity right and Lewis type Brunestad type acidity can be calculated and same thing in terms of the basicity right. If you take different concentrations of weaker acid gas or weaker uh, basic gas. So, you can get the idea about the milli equivalent of these gases reacted and which is adsorbing on the sites. right? So, they provide a sometimes very useful information in terms of the catalytic concentration of these sites active sites. So, TPD allows kinetic experiments. So, again here the in terms of CO chemical option then adsorption and desorption basically when I say chemical option. Right? So, that can give you the idea about the kinetics of the reaction because it may be a function of temperature at different temperature you do and then you can report the activation energy for chemical option. Right? Same thing is what I said turnover frequency turnover number. Right? So, for how many time the catalyst can be reused again and again recycle it in the system. Right? So, whether the catalyst is stable or not by doing this because once carbon monoxide can be jobs and does not dissolve from the surface easily it means the site is damaged right, or deactivated. So, you can get some information on that also. So, desorption rate can be measured from the surface right, at different rate of temperature right, and then you can calculate the rate of desorption. So, qualitatively TPD can be interpreted simply because the higher the desorption temperature the more strongly the adsorbate bonded to the surface. Just like in the TPR hydrogen chemical option you are doing right. So, when you have a hydrogen it is nothing but the hydrogen TPR right or hydrogen temperature adsorption desorption is steady right which is similar to once you reduce the catalyst so, the desorption or when you are determining the concentration of the metal sites right chemical option. So, you are reducing the catalyst first right. So, after TPR you are doing this chemical option hydrogen chemical option or pulse chemical option which I discussed earlier right. So, that is again a TPD hydrogen TPD basically. So, when you use this or when you do this so 
if the temperature required for adsorption and desorption is high it means the metal and support are strongly binded right so again a strong chemisorption when i say that metal is strongly binded so that adsorption of that gas will require a the higher temperature right and if it is a weaker then it will be a lower temperature so you can get this idea desorption temperature the more strongly is the adsorbate bonded to the surface right a strong metal support interaction can be seen here right since the area under the tpd curve is proportional to the coverage so how many molecules of that gas adsorbed on the surface just like in a physical adsorption and here it is a monolayer right so tpd spectra allows the determination of relative coverage so this is used for dispersion basically because we have done it for hydrogen co earlier in our earlier study but we have discussed right is to an example here again that when you do the tpd so there can this is your just your titania tio2 and this is your silica sio2 right so tpd is typically used in order to determine the properties of the reactive sites located on a different catalyst right just for example here the desorption temperature of propane depends on whether the support is silica or titania so this is used for propane so any reactive gas can be used here so this can be do used during reaction right suppose you want to look at some reaction propane dehydrogenation propane oxidation you want to do that study which support is good right selection of the support so the just the experiments have been carried out on two support so one is silica support and another is titania support you can see here that on the titania support the propane chemisorption is at a lower temperature right 300 degree centigrade whereas on silica it is at around 400 to between 400 and 500 degree centigrade right so this is here 400 degree centigrade this one and this is your 100 this is 100 degree and this temperature mentioned here is 200 degree centigrade here right so i will say that this peak may be around at around 150 degree centigrade or so so what what i want to say here if you have two different supports silica or titania a same gas propane will can be job at two different temperature it means something which is related to the acidic sites right or the property of the support right it may be some kind of pore structure also but since we are talking cavity option so that time that is less related right so the difference in peak intensity and desorption temperature and clarifies the distinction in the abilities of silica and titania to adsorb propane so the you can just distinguish the whether this is better or this is better so right now i will say that since the propane adsorption is faster right on titania support so titania should be a better support right but we have to check other things also simultaneously it may desorb the surface so it may, if it is weaker then this may not be suitable right adsorbs and does not react and leaves the surface right propane adsorb and also desorb faster right so that is also equally important but this this says that here it is a weaker adsorption here it is a stronger adsorption right so this information can be used to determine which catalyst should be used for a certain reaction by knowing the chemisorption property right so this is just an example that what information you can get from the tpd this is again to find out the acidity or of the catalyst but same thing can be used if you are different gas you can talk the uh, basicity also and also it talks about the stronger or weaker acidic sites also so here it is ammonia desorption and hjsm5 right which is silica alumina uh, material so that has been used as a adsorbent right so so if you look at here then the molecules of ammonia adsorb so area of this curve if you take this is simply talking the number of acidic site of the catalyst because ammonia is a basic gas so it will can be job on acid sites right so by knowing this that between 400 and 600 degree kelvin temperature this is the milli equivalent of the ammonia which is adsorbed and if you have some information of rate of change also suppose i have temperature versus time and if i have the rate of adsorption of ammonia on this right 
I can use this information for kinetics also, right? Desorption kinetics, adsorption kinetics, right? Same thing in the second case. If you look at this is jettison five with silica alumina ratio thirty, and heating rate is here ten degree Kelvin per minute, ten Kelvin per minute, rather, right? So that is also equally important because the higher the heating rate means the same temperature will come at a lower end, right? So your so that is also important that at what rate the heating has been done, right? And that will come when you do the kinetics because K is equal to K zero to the power minus T by R T. So you have to take care of that how K is changing with time also because that time when you change this, so you have to write T versus time profile also, right? This is at high temperature H T. right so high temperature and again you can get some information on the strong acid side so weaker acid side stronger acid side these informations can be obtained if you do the ammonia tpd so likewise this is the ammonia saturation the sample is degassed at 120 degree centigrade so you have to pretreat the sample for 1 hour right and heating rate 5 10 15 20 so as i said that effect of heating rate is also equally important so heating rate versus time and this is here in terms of the signal millivolt so basically millivolt signal per gram of the catalyst which is related to the volume of the ammonia right which is injected right so basically ammonia is being passed so pulse can be option right you have given a pulse of ammonia suppose or through syringe you have given 100 microliter of ammonia and then you are looking at its response right so when so what will happen ammonia will adsorb your heating is being done so ammonia will adsorb right and once everything is adsorbed then at the end your all the ammonia what if you are injecting continuously it will come same saturation and then you are heating it heating the sample right so just remove just flush it with certain concentration of helium for some time so that the superficial gas removes and now whatever the chemical of gas when you heat it now and then that will start the job right so you can have the information on desorption so this is just given here at different temperature so you can see that these are the peak intensity at different conditions so i am not going in details but basically this slope which has been shown here the lines which have been shown here to find out the activation energy for chemical desorption right because for this curve blue line this is this line for black line this is this third line this is this so we have some idea on the rates of the adsorption or chemical desorption right and desorption as a function of temperature right so this information can be used because this, this is uh, temperature versus time profile so dt by dt will be calculated from that right at different temperature so these are different linear rate 5 10 15 20 degree centigrade per minute right so by calculating this dt by dt you can find out your in equation you can find t as a function of time a linear rate here right and that will be used for kinetic study and these are the signals which just talks that at which temperature so they, here you can see the area under the curve you can find out the milli equivalent of the ammonia which is desorbed right or when you look at adsorption adsorbed so generally we to talk desorption of the ammonia so molecules of ammonia which have been desorbed from the surface so in this case in this case in this case so when you change the heating rate you can see that this nature of the curve is changing right so theoretically if you have because if the all the ammonia has been adsorbed on stronger or weaker side right whatever the rate of temperature the total milli equivalent of ammonia should be same right the only that thing that what i am saying that when the heating rate is different then it may happen that at higher temperature when when the, there are two peaks right the peak may merge together when the heating rate is very high so when you have a peak like this right this thing so if your heating rate is very high so these two may also merge like this right a single peak will come so you have to deconvolute that so that heating rate is also equally important to look at or to to analyze the results quantitatively as well as qualitatively for the different molecules of the gas which have been adsorbed at different temperature so this this information which is generated from this because you have a temperature versus time profile you have the millivolt signals which can be in arbitrary unit but one can very easily find out the molecules of the gas consumed by knowing the area under the curve right so and that can be used to find out because at different heating rate you have the temperature at which so you can just very easily 
linearize the equation d alpha by d t if I write right which is rate of adsorption or desorption of ammonia per gram of catalyst per unit time kinetics basically right. So, by doing the kinetics so it can be first order kinetics second order. So, I can write it just some constant times the concentration to the power n right. So, the, the loss if it is loss I will write it just in T j you write 1 minus alpha to the power n right d alpha by d t is equal to k times 1 minus alpha to the power n. So, you can very easily and that is the weight which is lost right. Same thing here I can find out the molecules of the ammonia adsorbed as a function of time right and that is a function of temperature right at what temperature it is adsorbed or can be chopped. So, you can very easily solve those equation and you can do the kinetics like an Arrhenius equation. So, you can find out the activation energy for chemisorption and the pre exponential factor like this right from the slope and interception right. So, this is just an information that what you can get from this graph what I have shown here and mathematical equation which I have not shown here, but may later when I will talk the kinetics I will show you, but basically it is nothing but the change in the number of moles right per gram catalyst per unit time which is rate of damage option as a function of k times C a to the power n when you write right and k is a function of temperature. So, k is related with T versus time data right and if you just take a log log plot l n k versus 1 by t you will get a straight line. So, find out slope right find out interception. So, slope is your E upon r something like that. So, calculate that activation energy right. So, this is again a typical curve what is from our lab data. So, we have different catalysts copper, zinc, nickel, copper, zinc, calcium aluminate as I said earlier C A 12 A L O 17 right sorry A L O A L 7. This, so, this is something like this. So, I will write it here if I just look at the this is C A calcium aluminate what I am saying. Right. So, I told you that this was prepared by mixing calcium oxide and aluminum oxide and then it was sintered to a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade in one typical run where the heating rate was again 10 degree Kelvin per minute and for a period of 24 hour. Then from XRD we observed that this is different phase. So, this is calcium aluminate right. So, just like C A A I will write where calcium oxide and aluminum oxide binded together right it was another phase 12 C A O 7 A L 2 O 3 which. So, this is basically a desired phase right because this has excess oxygen in the lattice structure and basically good when you have a reforming type reaction right. So, or even for the pyrolysis reaction this catalyst have been tested or these catalysts have been tested. So, what so what I mean to say here so we have prepared different catalyst and this is one support on C A 12 C A. 12 A L 7 which is written which is something like 12 C O 7 A L 2 3 right and these are nothing but copper zinc nickel copper zinc and supported on these catalyst right. So, you can see here that this is the just a support right which is this line right and this one is your copper zinc nickel and this is your third line which is copper zinc here. Right. So, this is copper zinc, this is your support, the lower one, this one, right. So, the basic idea here, what I am saying, the basicity is mainly because of the support, because this 12 CO7 L2 O3 is basic in nature, right, calcium oxide, aluminum oxide. So, you can find out the signals in terms of ammonia TPD, right, but so since it is a basic catalyst, ammonia will not give any peak, because ammonia will not come in on that, right. But when you have copper zinc alumina then it may have certain kind of because aluminum have some kind of amphotric properties certain kind of acidity also right. So, 12 CO 7 to 3 when I am saying it does not mean that it is a totally basic it has some kind of acidic side also right. But we have reduced the acidic side by reacting it with calcium oxide right. So, basic so it has certain kind of basic property also. So, basicity will not be determined in this case, but acidity can be determined. So, this is nothing but area under the curve if you look at. So, that will talk on the concentration of that right acidic side and when you have the copper zinc nickel. So, this is the concentration now right. So, there is a slight variation in the temperature also desorption because the metal support interaction is dominating right. 
the copper zinc is binded with the support part right. So, because of that your reduction temperature is different which I have not shown here, but it is different and also the TPD curve shifts to a slightly to a right hand side right. So, that type of information you can get when you have that TPD with different support and different metal impregnated catalyst right. Same thing another technique which is your TGA. So, as I said that it talks about the loss in weight when you heat the sample right. So, basically when you have a catalyst which is something say calcium carbonate just like a solid material and you heat it. So, it will decompose right. So, you can do the kinetics for the non catalytic reaction also just if you want to see the decomposition of calcium carbonate that can be done through this right. So, generally here in this the small amount of the catalyst is kept in a pan right being just weighed amount which is a platinum pan here right and you just heat it at a different heating rate and you find out the loss in weight right or change in the mass as a function of time and again heating rate is important here. So, temperature versus time is one profile and W versus time is another profile. So, how mass is decreasing with time and how temperature is changing with time. So, you can very easily do the kinetics from this TG operator right and also you can get the idea about the catalyst property that at what con temperature it will decompose basically calcination temperature what temperature required for calcination you get the information from this. And if you put in the same operator some reactive gas like hydrogen this is similar to TPR because you are reducing the catalyst in the presence of hydrogen. So, TPR study can be done. So, TJ units are generally connected to a mass spectrometer also. So, whatever the gas decompose right when you have a biomass material and you want to do the kinetics of the biomass then you connect this TJ to a mass spectrophotometer. So, you can find out the composition of the product also right. So, complete characterization of the oil or product can also be done through this kind of reactor system right. So, the off gases from the catalyst can be measured as a function of temperature and you can very easily do the kinetics and the simplify the product distribution as well as using a catalyst you can do the reaction also right. So, TGA generally serves as a weight temperature profile right which is helpful right for regenerating the catalyst and helps in determining the volatile compound components that is present before calcination right. So, sometimes TGA is used to remove the carbon from the catalyst right the spent catalyst do the TGA and you can find out what is the temperature required for removing the carbonaceous material or impurity from the reacted catalyst right. So, I will continue it next time. Thank you.